welcome to lecture number 12. Uh, you have uh, so far what we have done is, uh, well, uh, in last lecture what we were doing was band structures of semiconductors. I hope you got a good overview of what the band structure looks like, the kind of information we can get from it. We talked about effective mass in terms of devices, we talked about optoelectronic properties, we talked about in that context we said that if you want a good optical material then it better be a direct band gap semiconductor so that its absorption is very good. By same token we will see later that emission also will require exactly the same thing that intuitively you can pretty much see because if photon has to come out then the electron must relax back to the valence band from conduction band and in doing so if it involves phonon in, in like in indirect band gap semiconductor then it will be it, the energy release would go into heating the lattice and it won't come out as light whereas if it is direct band gap semiconductor the, you don't need to involve the lattice you don't need to involve the phonons and therefore you have hope you hope that you will get photons out and therefore that's something which information you when you select materials you can select based on the band structures uh, based on how the band structure looks based on that you can select therefore whether uh, what kind of, um, what kind of material will be optoelectronic material material which will not be apart from that you saw curvatures when you looked at curvatures you looked at we looked at effective masses at different places according accordingly you can make innovative devices such as something which has a negative differential resistance etc etc there are many many such things which come out of band diagram anyways so that's something we will start using start using but obvious question which you come to your mind is that well fine we but then how many if if you're going to talk about electrons in conduction band and valence band then how many electrons are there in conduction band how many holes are there in the valence band at let's say room temperature or the operation temp operation temperature of a device which typically would be around room temperature and hence at that temperature what is the carrier what is the number of carriers when device is operating you will think of carriers present in any of these bands over and above what is thermal equilibrium point is that whatever is in thermal equilibrium in other words if I take a room gallium arsenide which is supposed to be optical material if I take it at room temperature some electrons from valence band would have gone to conduction band and therefore there will be some holes in the valence band but then I do not see light coming out I do not see light coming out of this gallium arsenide material why so obviously this material is in thermal equilibrium things which are in thermal equilibrium are not giving you they, they cannot be producing extra energy they cannot be giving out light in order to get light out of it I must create excess over what is the thermal equilibrium value so in other words when we start learning about devices then it will be about creating the excess values over and above above or below does not matter either way over and below equilibrium in other words in order to understand those device at all times you must know at least what is thermal equilibrium what is the baseline above below which you can then start operating the device and hope to get photons in and out ok so therefore what we are going to start now is carrier statistics question we will ask is so let us reduce this problem to different one now if I think of my semiconductor to be as follows that is here is the valence band energy that corresponds to clearly if I plot like this a direct band gap semiconductor let us say I plot something like this does not matter so let us make it a little better right here something like this this is E versus K so if I plot this so here is my EV here is my EV energy this is in the energy axis and here is my EC energy which is the bottom of conduction band here is the bottom of conduction band and here is the top of the valence band this is the top of the valence band and this is the bottom of the conduction band if I plot this energy on the energy scale this is the electron energy scale this is the electron energy scale then what do I see these are all allowed energies I have a band the allowed energy how far it is going I have not shown here how far it is going I have not shown here so let us assume that it is somewhere like this it gets close somewhere here after that some band gap again and then so on so let us say I have this is a band which we are calling as the valence band and I have a band here a conduction band 
and the common features in all semiconductor is at 0 k electrons are filling completely the valence band and conduction band is completely empty and hence it is an insulator. Now, if this is the band, the what kind of picture is this? This kind of picture is like this that in this diagram is E k diagram, but here I am plotting only energy and therefore I am drawing horizontal lines. What is this axis then? This axis you can think of the real axis, here it is a reciprocal, la reciprocal lattice axis or reciprocal axis k was in reciprocal space. Now, you can think of real space point being let us say I have this as a semiconductor which I am showing you here, here is the semiconductor which is let us say uh, and I will ask the question at this position where is the conduction band, where is the and the valence band, then I show that at this energy level, this is the energy where the valence band is and this is where the conduction band starts. Okay, I ask the same question here, what about this point, where is the valence band and where is the conduction band? Well, it is a homogeneous material, so therefore, the valence band is at same position and the conduction band is same position. What about at this point? Same thing, same position is valence band, same position is conduction band. So, in that sense, I can think of it as a real space, space along the axis or on the in the material somewhere and at all points since the homogeneous material the energy energies are same identical at every point. Therefore, you can imagine this plot to be in the real space in the real space to be this plot. So, so what I am going to do is now abandon this band structure for a minute for doing this thermal equilibrium statistics. I am going to abandon this uh, this this uh, E versus k diagram and stick to only energies. We understand that if a electron has to go from here over to here, if electron has to go from here to here, we understand that it may have to change its k state also depending on whether it is direct band gap semiconductor or a indirect band gap semiconductor. But, but knowing that, that there is that that semiconductor is a indirect or, band or direct band gap semiconductor, knowing that it may have to k change, uh, change the k state, we will ignore that point right now will think of only energy transitions and therefore, use this kind of band diagram which everybody is quite familiar with from school days itself where a valence band and a conduction band is shown. So, that is exactly the diagram I have now be began to reproduce and while in this particular diagram I am not showing the top where this uh, this particular band energy levels terminate, I have in this diagram I have shown that this is where it terminates and this is where the band or valence band terminates in the energy right here this is the maximum of the energy right here, this is the minimum of conduction band and this is where the valence band terminates, this is where the conduction band terminates. Okay. So, after that there is another band gap and then more bands are there, we are not interested in that, we are and we are interested in only the one which is completely full and the next one which is completely empty, those are the two uh, we are interested in because those are the way that is where the transitions of electrons will take place between empty and filled states. All right. So, this is the picture in this question in this picture the question we are asking is if you have a temperature T, if you have a temperature T then how many electrons are going to be found in conduction band, how many electrons n per unit volume, number of electrons per unit volume will be found in conduction band and how many holes number of holes per unit volume will be find found in valence band. Let me draw this picture now a little bit more clean. So, here is conduction band and this is energy E c and this is energy E v sorry valence band maxima and here is conduction band minima and this is the valence band sorry this is not conduction band this is valence band and this is conduction band. All right, what do we have? We are saying that this is full of electrons, but some have gone into the higher conduction band state. So, this is where the electrons are filled up in the dashed region and the top states are where the holes are. So, that is where the holes are right here are holes because some electrons have jumped in there jumped up into the valence band and what has happened is there is some electrons which have electrons which are jumping have jumped here. So, question we are asking is what is n number of electrons per unit volume of the material and what is p number of holes in the valence band, number of electrons in the conduction band, number of holes in the valence band and yesterday and, and the a couple of lectures ago I have already explained to you that 
we need we can speak of holes in the valence band because remember i showed you that in order to calculate current it is sufficient to derive quantity called holes in valence band where the curvature is concave downwards and electrons we can think of in conduction band all right this is what basically we want to find out at temperature t how many will there be and remember it is in this context i was still telling you what this band band gap is band gap is eg is ec minus ev and that i showed you for silicon is 1.1 for example for gallium arsenide it is about 1.4 ev and i showed at room temperature at at this t how many nnp is the question i have asked and i told you that kt is about 29 milli electron volts or 30 milli milli electron volts given that thermal energy yet how many electron and holes are there in conduction band and valence band is the question we are trying to find in this context you should also think like this if you have silicon which is bonded to other silicon atoms like this tetrahedrally bonded to other silicon atoms the bonding i have shown you the fact that one electron becomes free it's all covalent bond so all electrons are occupied all electrons are tied up and they are all in valence band now what happens a bond breaks a bond breaks a bond breaks like this and i get something a hole here and an electron becomes free corresponding electron becomes free this is a free electron which goes in conduction band and this hole is in the and the free hole in the or the hole which is free i'll say is in the valence band so i have this green holes in the valence band and a conduction band uh, and and the electron in the conduction band which is also free all right if this has happened then remember how many bonds are there density of silicon atoms if you take the density and calculate the number of silicon atoms per centimeter cube you would find about 10 to power 22 atoms per centimeter cube in silicon so that's a number you need to remember for most materials this is the 10 to power 22 atoms per centimeter cube so if you look at the bonds also number of bonds with it the approximately similar order of magnitude same number of bonds 10 to power 22 bonds per centimeter cube so if you going to break these bonds how much maximum you can get into any of these is 10 to power 22 obviously it is not going to happen otherwise material is all gone so this number of n and p is going to be significantly less than 10 to power 22 electrons or holes n and p in the respective bands per centimeter cube so there are some 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 boundaries of numbers i'm giving you and now let's begin to see how we'll derive this quantities n and p so that's what we're going to do start in this lecture and probably take 3 4 lectures we'll build up this idea for 3 4 next 3 4 lectures so let's start with it and in doing so we'll begin to use many of the concepts which we have already used so let's start with this as follows let's start with idea of density of states which you have already been introduced first let's start with density of states you shall recall that i had derived for free electrons if for free electrons i had derived density of states as a quantity equal to 1 over 2 pi square uh, 2 m by h bar square 3 by 2 energy to power half that's a quantity i had derived earlier as density of state and you will recall g of e d e gives you gives you number of st electron states in e and e plus de that was the definition this is the number of electron states available in this region if i plot this then this looks like as follows as energy increases if i plot g of e then what happens as energy at zero energy this is zero or the band edge at zero energy and then it gradually increases as a square root of e as a square root of e it starts increasing like this that's the nature of g versus e curve all right having done this now let's start applying this what do we have we have a conduction band we have a conduction band looking like this
and here is E C. Here is E C and it is going up here. This is the conduction band. This I am showing only the conduction band. Of course, there is a valence band also. There is a valence band also. All right. Now I am going to use this density of states, but with following modification. I am going to write density of states in conduction band as a symbol C I will give and this is the density of states in conduction band. I am going to write this as 1 over 2 pi square 2 m of electron. So, I am going to put a symbol here. I am going to put a star for a effective mass. I am going to put the same thing h bar square and I am going to write this as energy minus E c to power half. You can begin to see why I have done this. First of all, you notice that this is valid for all energies greater than or equal to E c. All energies greater than or equal to E c, why? Because you see at E c, below E c is no conduction band, there is no disallowed state. So, therefore, I must think of a all energies above that. Since the band just starts here, band just starts here, so there are 0 density of state just at E c. Just like I had my 0 in this expression was at E equal to 0, at energy equal to 0, I had a 0, at energy equal to 0, I had a 0, a 0 of G c, density of state was 0, 0 at E equal to 0. But now, since this 0 is at E c level for conduction band, for conduct density of states of electron in conduction band, it is 0 it is at energy equal to E c. Therefore, I have written as this as E minus E c. So, that at E equal to E c, this density of state becomes 0 and I start making, making same curve. That is the first change I have made. Second change is that recall that now I take into account in free electron theory I had E versus curve which was exactly parabola. Energy was and this is K versus energy, the exact parabola. That is what this, this quantity was. Now, my, my, my situation right now is if I plot, if I see, if we look at silicon or gallium arsenide band diagram, then some in this band diagram I see some behavior like this this portion E versus K, this portion which I am plotting here, this is the portion which I am interested in, this is where the minimum of conduction band is, where E c is, I am plotting this region. When I am plotting this region, then effective mass at this point of time, at the, at the, it may not be a parabola for one thing, that it may not be a parabola at all. Second thing is, the curvature may be different than what the electron's mass is 9. Point 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31 kgs. It may be different from that. So, therefore, you remember this is precisely the region, reason we derived a expression called effective mass. So, what I am going to do is I am going to take E versus A curve, actual E versus A uh, E versus K curve, sorry, not A curve, E versus K curve, and I am going to calculate the curvature and I am going to take inverse of that mass and I will try to somehow reduce it to a single quantity and that quantity I will call as effective mass. What precisely we do in this case, I am ignoring that question, but therefore, but however what I am saying is that in this expression therefore, if I replace it, I am going to think of equivalent density by, I am going to fit it the density of state to actual density of state, I will fit this formula by replacing by mass by an effective mass depending on the curvature of E versus K diagram. So, this therefore, becomes my effective density of states in conduction band. That is one thing. Second thing notice that, that if I plot this density of state, if I plot this density of states again, then G of C E, if I plot versus energy, then it will continue to increase like this. But notice that again I will encounter a band edge somewhere here. So, the, according to this expression which I am just plotting, it continuously increases. Somewhere here is my E c and here is the E top, let us call it E, e c top 
this is the top of EC. So this is EC top. Let's call it EC top. So if this is EC top, then clearly my density of state at top again becomes zero. So it must somewhere be something like this. Actual density density of state should be really something. We should not have this portion, but should have should behave like this. Fine. But this expression does not carry. This expression does not carry that. It is only increasing. We will stick nonetheless to this expression and I will show you that this portion of the curve is irrelevant at the end and therefore, we are, it is sufficient that we are going to be operating, we are going to be doing all our calculations only in this region right here and hence our density of state which I have just derived for conduction band should be sufficient. All right, let us move to the next page. So, I am going to reproduce this density of states of conduction band in energy E, therefore, again I am going to write it as 1 over 2 pi square 2 m electrons effective mass. I have replaced replace this electrons mass by effective mass, so that I can fit it according to E versus k curve, actual real E versus k curve, E minus E c to power half. Now, what I am also interested in density of, this is the density of electron states. So, likewise, I am interested of density of holes. What about density of holes? Whole states, not electron states, whole states in valence band. Clearly, if electron in, in energy in this picture, this is the conduction band and this is the valence band, this is the valence band and this is the conduction band if electron energy increases like this, here is E c, here is E v. So, electron energy is increasing like this, then whole energy must be increasing like this. Whole energy, electron energy, electron energy and this is holes energy. This holes energy must be increasing this way. So, by same token if I start saying for this holes, for holes therefore, if I first think of energies as going minus h square by 2 m k square, first of all start thinking like this, they are going down. Then second thing I can do is, I can use the same formula now for density of states. I can write g v of e as equal to 1 over 2 pi square times 2 m, now I am going to write h star, let us use holes will stick to p m p square m p by h bar square to power 3 by 2 and now I am going to write it as e v minus e to power half for energies less than or equal to e v. For energies less than or equal to e v in the same way in same way just I have written like this same logic applies here when I am looking at whole states except now I am writing e v minus e because remember what will happen? Density of states here will be 0 at E equal to E 0, e, at E equal to E v density states will be 0 which is what I have done and as we go deeper and deeper, lower and lower in energy towards let us write it E by same way E t bottom. This is energy E v bottom, lower energy. So, as we move from E v to E v bottom, what will happen? Density of states will continue to increase density of states would continue to increase and therefore, I have written first of all E v minus E c in a way where if E is decreasing at this electron energy E on this scale, if this is this is the scale for E. So, if as E as we going down in this, what will happen in energy that means as E is becoming lower and lower, then therefore, then what should happen? Our density of state should increase should be increasing. Therefore, I have written as E v minus E here and same for the same reason for the curvature of valence band. The curvature remember which is a hole like surface. I have therefore, calculated effective mass for that also and substituted in there with the same logic which we did for conduction band de density of electron states, density of, of electron states in conduction band. Now, I have calculated density of whole states in valence band. So, same logic applies as I go down and then 
as I reach towards the bottom of the band, again my density of states should go down to 0, which is not predicted by this equation. This equation says it keeps increasing continuously. So, but I will show it to you later that only portion that we are, are going to apply this equation is really just near this region, this E V region. Near the E V region, we are going to apply only in this small region and therefore, we are okay to use this expression that I will prove to you later, little bit later, uh, later that we can continue to use that. Okay. So, the two things which we have done is, let me now encircle this. So, this is one expression which we are going to use, which is the density of states of the conduction electrons in conduction band. Second, we are going to use this expression, which is for density of states in and this of course, is for E greater than or equal to E C and no expression is needed. There is no density of states between E V and E C because you can see there is no density that is why it is called band gap. There is no density of states between these two state between these two energies. Okay. So, that defines our density of states. Now, I am going to define another quantity first. Now, I am going to define probability of finding an electron So, this is what we want to do now. Why so? On the side, you can see that if G C E is D E is the number of, if G C E D E is the number of electron states in conduction band in energy range E and D E then if I multiply these are states, if I multiply this by probability of occupation of these states, then I will get actual number of electrons in energy range E and E plus D E. Between E and E plus D E, if I want to know how many electrons are there, then I know that this is the number of states, electron states. This many electrons could be there maximum. That is the number of electrons that could be there in this energy range. And if I therefore, multiply this by probability of finding an electron at this energy E, then I would get actual number of electrons in the same energy states. So, that is what we are heading towards. I have already defined this quantity. Now, I am going to define the probability. Once I have the probability, I will multiply the two and I will get my number of electrons. That is the strategy we are adopting. So, F e is the, let us define F e is that probability. F e is that probability of finding an electron in energy at energy state E. All right. So, this is the probability All right. If so, then please also note that 1 minus F e is probability where electron is not. So, 1 minus F e must be that probability. So, in valence band, if I want to find how many holes are there, then I obviously know G v e d e is the number of whole states, that is the number of holes that can be in energy range E and E plus d e. In energy range this much that can be the hole, holes. If I multiply this by 1 minus F e therefore, then I will get how many holes are actually there in valence band. 
So that is why we, if I can know what F e is, then I will know what my 1 minus F e, what 1 minus F e is. All right. So now let us do this. So now electrons are fermions. Electrons are electrons are fermions. That means the spin is the half spin in there. Just think of it like that only at this point of time. Electrons are fermions, they follow Fermi statistics. Fermi Dirac statistics. So, what is the Fermi Dirac distribution? F of E is equal to 1 over 1 plus e to power e minus e f by k t. Maybe I should be little bit more careful here now for time being I should write it as k b t. I am going to try to remember to keep it k b, but in context please remember also you also please remember this if I miss sometimes then this k b starts for stands for Boltzmann constant. k b is Boltzmann constant. So, and since we have been using a small k earlier also, therefore, I am putting a b sign also b, b subscript also. There are times I may forget to put this b subscript. So, in context remember this k is not the reciprocal ve uh, vector in the reciprocal space, rather it is a uh, it is Boltzmann constant. All right. So, let us plot this. Let us plot this first at 0 k. So, this is the Fermi, this is the probability of finding an electron at energy E and there is a parameter called E f. What this parameter is, we will see in a minute. Okay. So, let us plot this at 0 k first, at 0 k. At 0 k, let us do this. So, if I plot as follows, here is the energy axis and here is f of E. If I plot this and here is quantity called E f, this parameter, this energy E f is in here. So, for all energies, E less than E f, all energies E less than E f, E minus E f is of course negative and some negative number divided by 0 leads to therefore minus infinity. So, e to power minus infinity is 0. So, I am left with 1 divided by 1. So, I have up to here this probability is equal is 1, this probability is 1. For all energies greater than E f, for all energies greater than E f, E minus E f is greater than 0 and then some number greater than 0 divided by a temperature which is 0 gives me plus infinity. So, e to power plus infinity is infinity. So, 1 divided by infinity therefore, is 0. So, this curve looks like this at 0 k. This is 1 and then 0 interesting. So, that defines my E f. Now, recall context of metal, metals free electron theory. What did we say? We did all the our calculations were at 0 k. We said electrons start putting on k states start putting in electrons and whatever number of electrons you have up to whatever point they fill up whatever the energy that is what we call as the Fermi energy and then we talk about Fermi sphere. That is the highest energy they are filling up up to. Why? Because at 0 k probability of finding electron was 1. So, there was no difference between whether there is a state or whether the state is occupied because we know that probability of finding electron was 1. Therefore, if there is a state then it will be occupied up to E f up to as you can see F e value of F e is 1 up to E f. That means, up to E f if there is a state electron would have occupied it at 0 k and hence we did not dis distinguish between state and the presence of electron. All right. And above E f therefore, all the energies were or all the states were empty as you can see probability of finding the electron above E f was 0 and therefore, even if there are states since there is no probability of them being occupied therefore, there were, there were no electrons above E f and in that sense now we can see 
that this EF quantity right here is the Fermi energy. This is what we call as Fermi energy. So, now let us start looking at for temperatures at temperatures greater than 0 K. What happens to this probability? Now, you see that some electrons which are filling up to EF. Now, as it raises the temperature, some of these electrons will now jump to a higher state, leaving behind holes. So, what will happen? This curve should begin to change and should acquire a character something like this, a character which is like this at T greater than 0, 0 Kelvin. There should be the temperature and that you can clearly see from here itself for energies. Now, T is of a finite number, T is finite number. So, this is going to fall off exponentially like this. So, you can go ahead and plot this. All right. So, that is the nature of our Fermi energy curve and then this, this shows and this value at E f, that is at E equal to E f, then this E minus E f will be 0, 0. So, E this will be and since T is finite, so there will be E to power 0, E to power 0 is 1 and therefore, I have 1 plus 1 right here and this is 2. So, 1 divided by 2, so the probability is half. So, at E equal to E f, this number should be half. So, the another definition now of another definition of Fermi energy. So, we can define now, define Fermi energy. which probability of finding an electron is equal to half. So, Fermi energy is that energy where probability of finding an electron is half at t greater than 0 k. So, that is another way of defining Fermi energy, which will be useful in context of semiconductors as you can almost see. If you, uh, if you have not seen it yourself, I will point it out to you eventually. All right. Now, let us make some approximations. So, may make some approximations. Let us make some approximations as follows. So, I continue to plot this E versus F of E as this curve right here. That is E, this is E F and on top of that, now I am introducing this curve like this and I am going to pick few points. I am going to pick a point right here, we will use different pen here. Let us pick this point here, which is E f minus 3 k t k b t and this point, let us pick some other point here right here. This is E f plus 3 k b t. So, this 3 is a number pulled out of hat as an arbitrary number, but what is significance is I will show you it need not be 3. If you are happy with 1, you work with 1. If you are not happy with 3, you can work with 5 also. Either way, you will see what it means and once you understand that, then you can free to choose whatever you like and this of course, is half. If that is the case, then let us make a approximation. All right. For E greater than E f plus 3 k t. That means, for energy is beyond here. For energy is greater than E plus 3 k b t, what happens? What happens to my f of E? f of E is 1 over 1 plus E minus E f exponential by k b t. So, if E is greater than if E is greater than E f, that means E minus E f is greater than 3 k b t. So, E minus E f is greater than greater greater than 3 k b t, then E f E minus E f by k b t is greater than 3. In other words, 
this what is exponential is greater than 3 and e cube if I think if I can neglect if e cube you think e cube is much much greater than 1 then I can neglect this quantity I can neglect this quantity 1 in favor of e cube and in that case I can simply make the approximation and write this as 1 over e to power e minus e f by k b t which is equal to e to power minus e minus e f by k b t which notice is like a Boltzmann distribution. So, for and what is the significance of 3, 3 k b t that you can make this approximation. If you think that e cube is much much greater than 1 then take 3 k b t. If you not satisfied if you are satisfied by e to power 1 which is 2.7 if you are satisfied by e to power 1 as being much much greater than 1 then you can take this number 3 instead of 3 you can take 1 or if you do not like 3 to be too coarse an approximation and if you want it to be 5 then if you think e to power 5 is actually one, one much much greater than 1 then you can think of this number as 5 a choice is yours but most cases e cube is or 3, 3 k b t is sufficient enough but that you and once you understand it to what accuracy you want to calculate things you can make your choices. But the point more important point is a Fermi direct distribution for these energies E greater than E plus k b t k b t has reduced to a Maxwell Boltzmann Boltzmann types of Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. It reduces to Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. Similarly, if I solve for 1 minus F e, I am interested in 1 minus F e. Remember why I am doing that? I am interested in number of holes, number of electrons at higher temperature, what are electrons have jumped to higher energies. Correspondingly, they have left holes here, they have left holes here. So, I am interested in 1 minus the blue shaded region, 1 minus F e and in red region I am interested in red shaded region I am interested in F e the probability of finding electron and blue region I am interested in 1 minus F e which is the probability of finding holes. So, if I am looking at this then I then what then I am looking at for conditions where E is E is less than E f minus 3 k b t or I am interested in region where e e to power e minus e f by k b t is much 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 less than 1 is much much less than 1. Therefore, by same token what we have been doing there since we can neglect e cube in favor e cube we can be neglect is much much greater than 1 same reason where we are interested in this approximation where I can make this approximation. So, let us write 1 minus F e if I write my 1 minus F e then I am going to write this as e to power e to power e Since this is much much smaller than 1, since this quantity much smaller than 1, then therefore I can drop this term, I can drop this term in favor of 1 and this approximately approximately therefore is equal to e to power e minus e f by k b t which is again Bolt Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. And remember this quantity is a negative quantity all e's are less than e f. So, therefore, this quantity is a negative quantity in the bracket. So, this is Maxwell
all right if that is the case now I can figure out what the population density is. So, now you see that now we have we have understand that if you are from Fermi energy whatever the Fermi energy is if you, as long as you do not ask the question very close to it then the distribution is Maxwell Boltzmann type of distribution. All right. So, now let us look at this from following point of view uh, or let us look at like this. So, what is let us go back to our original question now how many electrons in conduction band. So, I am going to write this as population density. I am interested now in population density. population density of electrons in conduction band of holes in valence band all right. So, that density so now remember now this n if you wish I can write it as number of electrons in E to E plus D E range in conduction band is going to be equal to f of e g of s is only going to be this quantity all right because this is the number of states multiplied by number of electrons and number of the probability of finding an electron in the state. So, with that multiplication I should have number of electrons actually there. So, and therefore, number of electrons in conduction band which we define as n is simply equal to integration of this from where from E c which is the bottom of the conduction band to E c top, top of the conduction band. If you integrate through and through f of E g c E d e of course, you can raise the objection that you kept saying that g c I am not g c is not valid near e c top because at that point density of state should become 0, but yet our expression in our expression which we are using going to use is going to, going to increase. Anyway that is true that objection may be true, but at this stage since I am not writing what the expression of g c is if we have written correct expression of G c at least this expression is correct. Then we will see that if we use that definition of that expression of G c which we have derived then of course, we have to answer the question that I have just raised all right, but to, uh, up to this stage we are ok. Similarly, we can write number of holes in E and E plus D E in valence band as equal to 1 minus f of e g v of valence band d. This is the density of holes in valence bond band and I multiply the probability of finding a hole on that side. Then I have number of holes in valence band in this energy lane. So, number of, of holes and remember all these are since g c is per unit material volume per centimeter cube per meter cube whatever it is. Therefore, the n quantity which will derive is per unit volume number of electrons per unit volume. Therefore, number of holes in valence band now will be equal to p which will be equal to 1 minus f of e g v e d e and now we will int integrate it from from e v bottom to valence band edge up to valence band edge. So, that is what the integration this integration would be equal to all right. So, that is what we need to do to evaluate these quantities and we can now get what we are interested in n and p all right. In order to do so let us first do it graphically ok. So, we are going to do this integration first graphically and show you what this density n and p will be and what its behavior will be. That will take little time we, do, we are running out of time today. So, I will start that in next lecture, but just give you idea that what we are going to do is first we are going to plot this Fermi function we are going to plot this Fermi function 
we're going to plot this GC function, and then we'll plot multiplication of the two. Similarly, we'll plot this one minus FE function. We're going to plot this GV function, and then we'll plot multiplication of the two. And the area under that multiply multiplied curve then would give you the population which we are looking for. So that's the graphical integration we're going to perform, and I'm going to make this picture in the in the next lecture and show it to you. Once we have you seen that, and after that we'll start deriving our expression uh, in an analytical form. Okay, thank you.